is Don. Welcome to the program. Uh, we need to talk. First this. long dissertation about uh, what happened last night and why I uh, why I should be happy but really disgusted this morning I was going to uh, go into this long dissertation about this thing called called uh, Measure B that passed in Los Angeles yesterday it was uh, 28 minutes worth of material I scrapped it. I scrapped it because I didn't, I realized that you probably wouldn't care. If you cared, Prop B would have gone down the tubes. A, a, a capsule description of what plant, uh, what uh, Prop B was. Here in Southern California, here in the San Fernando Valley, uh, within walking distance of where I am sitting, um, many of the adult films and videos that you have enjoyed, at least uh, with one hand free, uh, are produced. And the uh, and there was a measure that would require these actors to wear condoms and use dental dams uh, during the production, something that many of these actors already do. Uh, But uh, it is, and people have called it, you know, it's it's not a, uh, it really has nothing to do with, with health. It really has everything to do with trying to kill the porn industry without having to go through the, uh, the rigmarole of trying to bypass the, con- the Constitution, the First Amendment. Uh, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. That's what they did. The porn business says they're leaving town, and uh, and a lot of people in San Fernando Valley will say good riddance, even though they're taking a lot of money and a lot of uh, tax dollars and a lot of st- a lot of uh, resources that we will be needing here in the San Fernando Valley. We don't have much of an industry up here at all. We used to have a couple, a couple of uh, manufacturing plants that built cars and stuff like that. We now have one aerospace company which is trying to get out of town as fast as humanly possible. We have the telemarketing industry and the pizza industry. If the foodies have their way, they'll kill the, uh, they'll they'll kill the pizza industry. <laughs> And if the uh, no-call list guys have their way, they'll kill the telemarketing industry, and that'll be it. Whatever customer service jobs they have up here have already gone to Sri Lanka. And I sat there, and I should have been... I should have been happy. I should have been uh, ecstatic. I should have been ecstatic because I was right again. This time with documentation. I said that the president would get the get a victory and he would have 303 electoral votes. I was right on the freaking nose. You go you go to to facebooks.com/polybi. You find my uh, voluminous Timeline and somewhere under there, using the uh, <clears throat> interactive uh, dealy that the folks over at uh, Huffington Post use, I just simply filled in the blanks and say, "Hey, 303." I was right. I I, I was right on the nose. 303. It has been scary. All of the things that I have been right on, whether documented or not, I, is 
It is absolutely frightening. All the things that I have been right on since 1986 and even beyond. And this is what I'm fearing. Number one, Prop B is the beginning of the end of freedom. Anything that's sexual freedom in this country is the beginning of the end. Because I said when they started going after gays, you know, they want to they wanna re-criminalize uh, gay activity. Well, we have three states that said yes to uh, gay marriage. That's wonderful. But they're going to try to shut that down. And once they shut that down, they're going to come after you. And Prop B is going to be the basis of what they'll, they'll do. Because they're going to say that AIDS is still a pandemic. And they're going to say, well, you see, if we could get the folks who do this for a living to wear condoms, we need to go in and get you to do that. And soon there will be a law that says that the police will come in to uh, inspect to see if you're, you have condoms in the house. You may even have to have some sort of certificate that says, uh, I don't have to use condoms. I'm married. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to build a family. And this is going to be something that will be written off by both conservatives and liberals. We have a, a financial meltdown that will make 1927 look look like a day in the park and that is coming in three years. It will come whether Obama's president or not. And I have a funny feeling that's really why I believe the Republican Party intentionally threw this election because they don't want to be the party in power when that happens. They remember what happened the last time. They couldn't get a person in office until 1952. (laughs) Think about it. There has not been a president of the United States between... In 1930 and 1952, that was a Republican. All because of the Depression. And what's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen, is going to make that Depression look like nobody's business. There will be an attempt on the life of the president, I believe. I don't want that to happen, but I believe that's going to happen. There would have been an attempt on the life of of Romney had he gone in. I hope I'm wrong. But I've been right on so many things, it scares me. And, uh... Thankfully it didn't happen tonight, but down the road it is going to be war. And there will be blood, and there will be guns, and there will be bombs, and there will be theaters of war in this country. We are so separate right now. And I've been lis- and I've listened to Glenn Beck. The man is emotional. The man is about. Oh, oh. <laughs> first hour I thought the man was going to kill himself and that was listening to what he has planned for his little network the blaze it's pretty ambitious and I said a year ago watch Glenn Beck what watch what he does with what he used to call GBTV now it's called the blaze Watch what he does with this, because what he is going to do with this is going to be the the benchmark of what we as progressives, true progressives, 
need to accomplish. And the people who call themselves progressives these days, I don't really believe they're that progressive. I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, let me rephrase that. I know what we what needs to be done. I just don't have the facilities to do it. I need ideas. I need to find a way to get this information out because there's a lot of stuff that's about to happen and I need to find people like me who un understands who understand I should say where we're supposed to be going the world's about to change financially politically culturally spiritually sexually personally everything that we have believed in is either going to morph into something else or we will stop believing it altogether I cannot see any other this does not mean that we're going to stop believing in God it means that our relationship with whoever we call a creator whoever we follow is going to change it doesn't mean that we are going to give up the free enterprise system. It means that things about it are going to change. And we need to start to learn how to work it. It doesn't mean that work is going away. It just means that like things like uh, steam engine operators and blacksmiths um, those are no longer going to be major industries. We have to find out what those industries are. And no matter what age we are, we need to find a way to... We need to find a way to... Uh, to work with that. We need to find a way to create money. We need to find a way to... Not walk away from wealth, but to build it. We need to find a way to be healthy without being miserable. We need to find a way to live instead of exist. There's a lot of things that are going to be changing. And I realized after yesterday that um, somebody has to talk about these things and get you to realize that change is coming and you have to do that. I'm just a guy who only has about three cents in his pocket, no fooling, who is trying to get off welfare, whose only studio is a Virgin Mobile LG Optimus V phone that is about to uh, go dead on him. But let me tell you what I'm working on. I'm working with a friend to create a show called uh, Two Girls Real Talk. It is someone else's idea. I'm just putting together a website. But what I want to do is I want to turn that into a vehicle for my friend. And using that, maybe um, a platform for different voices. Mine, yours. To get out there. Because talk radio is dying. A lot of media is dying. And I want to use that. I want to create a platform where we can actually just not only discuss things, but take action. You see, a lot of people keep talking about, you know, we need to take our, our country back. 
we never had our country, really. And it's time that we who really believe in real freedom took possession. Hopefully in the next few weeks and months, if I can continue to do this, I'll give you dribs and drabs. Those dribs and drabs will be on my website, it will be on my Twitter feed, and it will be on my uh, Facebook feed. The best way to get in touch with all of that is to just go to my website, which is yolasite.radiodon.com. Dot, well, it's actually it's radiodon.yolasite.com. Radiodon.yolasite.com. My personal main goals: employment, <clears throat> create a business model, and get this thing up and running. I'm 57 years old. I don't have time to try to get you guys to understand what I'm trying to do. I don't have time. You do. And after last night and this morning, it has become very, very clear to me that we can either keep talking about change or we can be the catalyst for real change. If there is, though, one thing I want to get rid of completely... It is this. I have talked about this many times. And last night in Los Angeles, it became abundantly clear that this monster continues to power this country. And that is the monster of fear. We need to get rid of fear. We need to get rid of our national paranoia about everything. Paranoia that has created some of the most outrageous, outlandish, and quite frankly, in my personal opinion, unconstitutional laws that have ever been created. I have to get rid of my fear. You have to get rid of your fear. Because... It was a fearless people that created this nation. It was a fearless people that came together after the Civil War. It was the it was fearless people who created almost every single not almost every single technological breakthrough that has brought us to this point. It was the elimination of fear that got us on the moon and had us exploring space. It was the elimination of fear that said we need to do something about our relationships with people of other colors and other backgrounds. We have to never give in to fear ever again and it's going to be hard it's going to be hard. I don't know what I can do to help eliminate it. I have to work on it myself. We all have to work on it ourselves. But once we eliminate fear in this country, we can do so much. This is what I want to do. I want to create an online community in which fear is put at the door. I can do it with your help and support. There will be some passing of hats. Please excuse this, because if you believe in something... then you sacrifice. I've sacrificed a lot in my life. 
I've sacrificed until I don't have anything left. We do not have the country we need right now. Last night, nationwide, was a nice little step forward. But we need bold steps. Last night in Los Angeles, we took two steps backward. We need to take bold steps forward. I need you to follow this broadcast this podcast Uh, you can do that through the site most of the things we have are up there and and uh, and archived blog posts and my twitter my twitter feed and my facebook feed and you can also um, hopefully join us on um, google plus as well hopefully I'm going to uh, create a separate (coughs) channel for all this Um, there's a lot of things I'm going going to try to do but I'm going to need your help I'm going to need your support Yes, I'm going to need your support financially. I'm sorry to say that. I know that I've passed the hat many times. I'm sure you're tired of me saying this. But this is a little bit bigger than me now. It's a little bit bigger than me trying to find some some, some crumb to eat tonight. It's this country. It's this world. But more than that, I, I need you to... Support this by telling other people about it, by giving me critiques, by giving me feedback, by discussing the things we discuss. Even if you need, feel the need to give me hell, do. At least, it, at least it's a, a way we know that you're listening. And we need more people to listen. I thank all the people who have glommed onto this on Spreaker. Almost 2,000 people so far. I don't know what you're listening to. Because <laughs> they never tell us that. They're just people who just listen. But I want you to listen. And I want you to, I want to hear from you. I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, 2,000 people a donation of 20 each to pretty much set up a studio so we can do this on a live basis set us up on Skype there's a lot of things we can do and we don't have a lot of time folks we don't have a lot of time because the bad guys are already regrouping after last night and they are working on plan B I think by mentioning Plan B, I think we've kept Barack Obama alive. We need more people to understand what's going on. We need more people to understand what the bad guys are. We need to create more videos and get, get them to go viral. We need more people speaking out. And we need less picture memes and more people actually talking on Facebook about these things. We got a president who's going to need all, all of our help in turning towards the light. Won't you help me? The website is radiodon.yolasite.com. Y O L A S I T E. Radiodon.yolasite.com. I'll meet you there. Have a great day. <laughs>